Welcome to this video class with an Aqua Christopher GK. Uh, in this video, we are going to be considering another part of our last class. Uh, the last class we created uh, sulfur and the other side of sulfur. Now, in this particular video, we will be looking at another segment of it. But still remember, if you are watching this particular video in YouTube, do well to subscribe to my channel if you have not done that. To get notified whenever new video is being uploaded. All right, let's take a look at the topic for the day is what? Uh, compounds, compound of sulfur. In the compound of sulfur, of course, we have several compounds of sulfur. We want to focus on tetraoso sulfate 6 acid. Our topic for this particular video is anchored on tetraoso sulfate 6 acid as a compound of sulfur. And it's expected by the end of the video, you should be able to explain the industrial preparations and uh, industrial preparations of uh, tetraoso sulfate 6 acid. Number two is that you should be able to state the properties of tetraoso sulfate 6 acid, which is first useful for. Next thing is you should be able to outline the uses of tetraoso sulfate 6 acid. And the next is where we we'll we we'll start by looking at first of all what is tetraoso sulfate 6 acid? What is it? Of course, H2SO4 is the most uh, important heavy industrial chemicals. One of the video classes uh, we talked about uh, chemical industries where we discuss heavy chemicals and fine chemicals. And one of the chemi chemi heavy chemicals we talked about there is tetraoso sulfate 6 acid, which is H2SO4. We still have other ones, HCl, we have sodium hydroxide and all of that. Now, the most important of them, of the heavy chemicals, is H2SO4. It has a lot of uses within and outside the chemical industries. Now, tetraoso sulfate 6 acid consumption used, used to be listed as the indicator of the state of a nation's economy before and even now and it is a strong diabetic acid it's an acid of course we do add it in the pronunciation it's an acid but it's a diabetic one means that it contains two hydrogen in the molecule all right how can we prepare it how it's been prepared in the industry it's been prepared through what we call contact process it's been prepared industrially by contact process now Tetraoso sulfate 6 acid, which is H2SO4, is produced from sulfur 4 oxide obtained by French process, which makes use of sulfur as raw material. So the beginning process is what? Sulfur 4 oxide. Then the sulfur 4 oxide produced from sulfur and contact process is mixed with air. When the sulfur 4 oxide is being mixed with air, it will produce something else, which is sulfur 6 oxide. The mixture is then purified through electrostatic dust precipitation. And in that area, all the arsenic compounds are removed because they will poison and inactivate the catalyst that is being used in the in the contact process, in the process, and the that catalyst is vanadium 5, vanadium 5 oxide. So the mixture of sulfur 4 oxide and air is passed over a catalyst called vanadium 5 oxide at a high temperature of 450 degrees Celsius. Then the, the, the sulfur 4 oxide is oxidized to sulfur 6 oxide. Of course, I said it before. A mixture of sulfur 4 oxide and sulfur uh, with air will produce sulfur 6 oxide. Um, and the process is this. The equation for the reaction is what we can see here. The equation for the reaction is what we can see here. And uh, it's enzotamic. You can see it. the enzotamic reaction. In this negative reaction is telling us that the, enzo the reaction is enzotamic. So the heat liberated by reaction, of course, is used to heat up the mixture of sulfur oxide and the air passing into the catalyst chamber. Since the reaction is enzotamic, of course, I said it. That the sulfur 6 oxide produced is passed or dissolved in 98% concrete to so forth to give oleum. This is the oleum. And when this oleum, after that, this oleum is then diluted, it's been diluted 
with a calculated amount of water to give this particular tetraozosophysis acid to give this. So when only is being diluted, it will produce tetraozosophysis acid. Now let's let me show you the 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 the, the, the image of that. Okay, before that, now so for this oxide will be dissolved. Of course, it will be dissolved and pass into water because it will form fine film of acid droplet with water, which is difficult to condense and dissolve in the bulk of the solution. Now look at it. The whole story that I've been explaining what the whole process is being depicted in this image on your screen. Now, this is the starting point. The starting point is the sulfur, combustion of sulfur, which means burn in air, it will produce sulfur C oxide. Look at the passage sulfur, uh, sulfur four oxide. Sulfur and air, oxygen, will give you sulfur four oxide. And then when it's been done, then it's been uh, heated again. And in, in the presence of a catalyst, which is one of the five oxide, this sulfur C oxide will be produced. With the help of 98% H2SO4, hydro, uh, hydrogen chloride, and uh, in the presence of mix, there will be olum. Olum will be formed. We have talked about it that before. And when this olum now is being diluted in water, it will form hydrochloric acid. This is the chamber of catalysts. This is the chamber of catalysts. We have another five oxide is being found. And this is the process of the contact process, industrial preparation of what? Tetraozosulfate 6 acid. All right, what are the physical properties of tetraozosulfate 6 acid? One thing is that it's dense, colorless, and uh, is only liquid when with a density of 1.84 gram per cm cube. Now it's dense, it's colorless, and it's liquid. Note that. Another thing is, it's oily. When you see it, it's oily and viscous. That's number two. Number three is that it's very corrosive. Tetraozosophosis acid is very corrosive and can burn when it's in contact with the skin. You will be here when somebody will say that somebody is being poured acid. Is the H2SO4 is what actually damages all people when it's have contact with human being, with skin, even clothes. It burns. So it's very, very corrosive. It's not that other acids don't do, other corrosive acids don't do, but this one is very, very corrosive. So it's also very soluble in water, and the great heat is involved during the process. So it's very, very um, soluble in water. Then chemical properties is this. In the chemical properties, it behaves several ways. It behaves in different ways. So first of all, as a dehydrating agent. Dehydrate means uh, removal of water. It adds that conch H2SO4 is a good dehydrating agent since it can remove water from air, many substances like sugar, ethanol, and even ethanol acid. Now, with this, so this particular 12 atoms of car carbon, carbon is wrong. It shouldn't be here. So, note this. So when glucose, uh, sucrose, which is a sugar, is being hydrolyzed, that means when it's been dehydrated, I mean when get 2 h 4 2 h 4 is being added to it, it will dehydrate it and it will, it will turn black. And that black is carbon, which is sugar charcoal, is black. So this is a dehydrating ability of tetraozosophosis acid. Next thing we need to understand that H2SO4 also acts as a drying agent. Of course, it's a good drying agent because it's hygroscopic. So it is used in drying gases. It is used in drying gases that are not oxidized by it. Gases like um, other gases except ammonia and hydrogen halides can be, uh, can, 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 uh, H2SO4 can be used as a drying agent except these two that can oxidize by it. So it's a, it's a good oxidizing agent, a good uh, reducing drying agent, a good drying agent. The next thing we need to understand that is uh, as an acid, dilute H2SO4 
but turns blue litmus paper red. Of course, it's an acid, and acid turns blue litmus paper red. So diluted one does that. So it reacts with base to form salt and water. Of course, acid reacts with base to form salt and water, which is a neutralization reaction. We do define. So we can see the equation for the reaction here. Equation for the reaction. This, this is base. React with H2SO4, it will form salt, normal salt and water. So it reacts with more electropositive metal like zinc, magnesium, iron, and many others, even sodium and all of that, aluminium. It will react with them to liberate gas, hydrogen gas. H2SO4, when it reacts with a metal that is higher than hydrogen, hydrogen ion in the electrochemical series. That particular metal displaces hydrogen from this particular acid and it will be liberated as a gas. So this zinc will display this hydrogen and it will be liberated as gas. So it also reacts with triosocarbonate 4 to liberate carbon dioxide. So when this reacts with this, it will liberate carbon dioxide from there and carbon dioxide will be formed. So it has that ability to liberate carbon dioxide from a triosocarbonate 4. So next thing is that it also acts as an oxidizing agent. It acts as an acid, acts as drying agent, it acts as a so what? Dehydrating agent. So oxidizing agent, concave to so far, is a strong oxidizing agent. It oxidizes many elements, both metals and non-metal, to their oxides. So here it was oxidizes this particular copper to copper oxide. It oxidizes uh, carbon to carbon, carbon four oxides. oxides. So it has a oxidizing ability to oxidize a, a metal or non-metal to their oxides. How can we test tetraoxos of a cis ions in the lab? How can we identify that tetraoxos of a cis ion is in a particular sample given to us? Now, when a sample or no sample is being given to you and the sodium, uh, uh, what is it called? Ma magne uh, uh, barium chloride, barium chloride, BACL2, is being added to a, an unknown substance. If YPPT is being formed, and so YPPT is uh, insoluble in excess, excess uh, HCL aqueous, it shows that uh, tetraoxos of a cis ion is in that substance. So tetraoxos of a cis ion will give YPPT with barium chloride solution, which is insoluble in HCl aqueous and the ionic equation for that is being given below. So this is how we can test it in the lab. When an unknown solution is being given to you, add barium chloride to it. If it gives you YPPT and uh, that YPPT you add also SS uh, HCl and uh, aqueous on it and it's insoluble. Know that the trousers of a cis ion is present in that substance. Thank you and the uh, before we end it, these are the uses of sulfur, but we have considered sulfur before because sulfur is the raw material, the starting material of the trousers of the cis acid we consider. And the, the end thing now is we need to know is that I, by end, before we drop this, for further discussion and the inquiry, if you want to get to me, you can get to me through my phone line and the WhatsApp line. Uh, you can see on your screen now. Plus two three four zero eight six five five seven three two two nine, or get to me to, with my email address at crystal one one six at gmail dot com. At crystal one one six at gmail dot com. Thank you for being part of this particular video class. Remember this and make sure that you subscribe to my channel if you are watching this on the YouTube, so that the next video that I will be uploaded that will be uploaded you will get notified for it. Thank you and remember this. All right.